Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a good break. You got something to drink, grab a snack. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Right. Um, so we uh, and we concluded the last session uh, addressing this one of this frequently asked question: Is is sickness the chastening of the Lord? And we read a couple of scriptures, uh, and uh, just to you know continue from where we left off. Um, here we see the word chasten is the Greek word that's used as paideo, which simply means to train up a child. Uh, that is educate or by implication, it's discipline, by punishment, to instruct, to learn, teach. Okay, this is from the Strong's Concordance. Uh, and uh, and if you have a new sword software, you can also you know look this up there. Okay, the word is also translated as learned. Right, as Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. So that's the similar kind of word that's used. So here we see that uh, it simply means as, again, to train up a child, to equip, to teach uh, or by implication, um, discipline, punishment, uh, by instruction, etc. okay? So chastening in the normal course of things has to do with teaching, correction, and punishment done lovingly as to a child. And only in extreme situation has to do with judgment. Okay. Typically, chastening must deal with training of a child, as we just read, and hence it refers to something done out of love and not anger. Okay, so coming back to the actual question, we see that would an earthly parent use sickness and disease to train up their child to learn how to do what is right? No. Even so, our God is infinitely a greater Father, the eternal loving Heavenly Father will not make his children sick to chasten them in the normal course of everyday life. But in the normal course of everyday life, walking with him, God will use his word, his spirit, and the fellowship of other believers to work his discipline into our lives. Okay, so um, that's addressing that question. And uh, another couple of quick questions is, is, is it all right to combine faith and medicine? It is, is it all right to combine faith and medicine? The answer uh, is a resounding yes, absolutely. And having looked at the instances of King Ezekiah, like we just did, uh, you know, God uses fig paste. Uh, he instructs fig paste you know, to be applied on his ulcers, to on his boils, and we see that he gets healed by that. And in Timothy, we see Paul instructing uh, to have some uh, wine for his stomach problems. Okay, so even when we administer medicine or receive medical help, our eyes are on the Lord to bring healing and cure. Our faith is in his word and in his power for healing ultimately comes from him. Okay, so is it all right to combine faith and medicine? Yes. And then finally, is it taking care of your health a sign of unbelief? Right. Uh, what do you guys think? Is taking care of your health a sign of unbelief? How many of you kind of take care of your health? Is that a better question? Okay, how many of you take care of your health? Yes. Okay. So, uh, one of the lessons we can learn from this person called Ephroditus, it is uh, just two pages before uh, mentioned in the book um, in Philippines chapter 2. 
um, we see that this person uh, almost lost his life uh, by not taking care of himself. And, and he was involved in, in, in God's work. Okay. And so one of the lessons we can learn from his life is that while we do our work in Christian ministry, serving the Lord and his people, we also need to main, uh, remain responsible and take care of our health. Um, another uh, popularly used words is uh, burnout. Right? So it is possible that you can burn yourself out by just doing too much, even in ministry, and uh, not taking care of yourself. Okay, so otherwise there is the possibility of neglecting our own bodies and we risk dying prematurely without having completed the work assigned to us. While we look to the Lord for healing, wholeness and health as part of our responsibility, it is necessary for us to take care of our health. Okay, uh, so I think uh, that's the end uh, of, uh, of the chapter where we address frequently asked questions. But uh, this is before we go into chapter seven. Um, hey, do you guys have any other questions? Like, is there something that you want to discuss or ask? Okay. All right, uh, then uh, let's move on to chapter seven. Uh, uh, in this chapter, we're gonna learn about uh, the practical guidelines on ministering healing. Okay. Practical guidelines on ministering uh, healing. Um, one of the important things uh, to know is that everything that you will be learning in this chapter or everything that we've also learned so far it can be used for both ministering healing and also receiving healing. Okay, uh, this same book, uh, which talks, say, it says ministering healing and deliverance, can be the same content, but can be renamed as receiving healing and deliverance because uh, it, it applies both. Okay, so uh, you know we know. Okay, if, if you have to minister healing, we know what to do. And if you have to receive healing, we know what to do as well. Okay, so uh, let's go on now. Um, practical guidelines on ministering healing. There are many ways in which we can minister to a sick person. There is no fixed method or process that we are required to use each time. What we attempt to do is to be familiar with the different ways to minister healing as described in scripture, okay? So what is the attempt? What's the purpose of this chapter is we attempt to be familiar with the different ways to minister healings as described in scripture, okay? While we keep in mind that there is no fixed method or process, uh, there's nothing wrong in being familiar with some of the methods uh, that's being used in the scripture to minister healing, okay? Because uh, remember that healing is not in the method, but in the person, because Jesus is our healer. Okay, so that's the basis, that's the foundation of this chapter. So the first thing, uh, how do we minister um, healing and deliverance? Through personal faith in God. Okay, through personal faith in God. Can someone read Proverbs chapter 4, 2022, please? Okay, Proverbs chapter 4, 20, 22. Can someone read that, please? Pastor, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20. 22. Uh, it's on the screen. So. For they are life to those who find them and help to a man's whole body. Uh, two scriptures uh, said 20, 21, and 22. It says 20 to 22. 20. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. 21. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. 
22 for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body thank you sir so it says it starts off by saying pay attention to what i am saying right pay attention to what i'm saying so there is a session a teaching session that is going on there okay and then the refer um, and it goes on to say that my words are like life and medicine to an entire body right so um so that's from chapter 4 verse 22 and uh, someone quickly read romans 10:17 Romans chapter 10 verse 17 That's someone else So uh, then I'm reading Romans 10 chapter verse 17 So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God Amen. Okay thank you So how many of I mean How many of us uh, are familiar with that scripture? And we've heard it many times, isn't it? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. So the point here of this uh, of this method is to teach, right? To encourage faith, right? Faith comes by hearing by the word of God, right? Uh, faith is encouraged, uh, you know, as we hear someone teach, uh, someone preach, right? We are we are inspired. Okay. So. Um, So the first point is through personal faith in God. Okay, um, so anyone can receive healing by meditating in God's word and using the faith that is birthed out of His word. By reading God's word, builds our faith. It equips us. It prepares us to receive healing and also minister healing. Right. So when faith is mixed with the word that we receive, God's power is released. to work a miracle of healing okay and faith is mixed with the word that we receive god's power is released okay so that's point 1 and uh, two aspects uh, of in how it can be expressed is faith in god can be expressed in a variety of ways but then here's just two believing and speaking okay believing and speaking okay i would like uh, someone to read Matthew seventeen twenty and Mark eleven twenty three, and Romans. These scriptures mentioned there, please. Hey, come on, guys! Quick, quick, quick! Um, hope you have your Bibles handy. Matthew seven twenty seventeen twenty. Oh, seventeen twenty. Seventeen twenty, he replied, "Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, 'Move from here to there,' and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you." Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, someone, Mark eleven twenty three, please. Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass, he he shall have. Thank you. And uh, finally, Romans chapter ten, verse nine and ten, please. Romans chapter ten, verse nine and ten. And that it, if you confess with with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead. You will be saved, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Right. Um, so we see that just a few examples on just believing and declaring, right? Speaking, right? Uh, we uh, another proverb that says, "The power of life and death." 
right? Life is in the power of the tongue, isn't it? Um, so we got to believe, you know, in faith, and then not just believe and not do anything about it, but speak. Like Matthew 17 and Mark 11 says, you know, speak to this mountain. And if you speak, it will be gone. And so when you're ministering healing, I uh, say, okay, you speak to that sickness. You speak, it's like you can say, hey, uh, the cancer in the name of Jesus, be gone. Right? Uh, bones grow. Uh, we speak, we believe, and we speak, we declare. Okay? And that is kind of related to the second point, believing and acting on your faith. Right, so we we you you built your personal faith. You've read the word of God. You are uh, you know you built your faith, and then now it's time to believe and speak and act on that faith that you have built. Okay, and that's one of the methods, the ways, and how we can minister healing, and also how we can receive healing. Okay, uh, exercising faith for others. Exercising faith for others. We see here, we can have faith in God for someone else to be healed. Examples, the Roman centurion for his servant, uh, the Canaanite woman for her daughter, Peter and John for the lame man at the temple gate. Okay, so uh, it's the first point and this point is kind of correlated. We, uh, the first point is more to be personal, individual, and then it's kind of use that same faith for another individual, for your friend, for your family member. Uh, that you uh, that you want to pray for and see healing minister to and we see that it is possible by exercising your faith with others okay and and that again comes in line with the third point here it says okay you are exercising your faith with others through the power and the prayer of agreement right uh, so if i'm the person that's receiving the that's receiving healing and uh you know, one of you are praying for me. Uh, you are exercising your faith, and I am exercising my faith in receiving healing, and you are ministering here. And that kind of leads to this beautiful third point: says that's this the, to the power of agreement, right? And you see, Matthew 18, 18, 20 it says, "Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven; whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven." Right? Again, I say to you that if Two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are, or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Right? And so you would have learned, studied about this, that ministering, uh, you know, in the name of Jesus, using the name of Jesus, is we don't just use that name to end a prayer. Is when we use, when we say, when we declare that in the name of Jesus, it is as if Jesus is present right there. And so, and then you come in agreement and your faith, you know, believing that Jesus can do this, nothing is impossible with him. So there is power through agreement. Okay, so uh, three things what we just learned so far is through personal faith in God, and that is built by meditating on the Word of God by hearing the word of God, by equipping yourself, empowering yourself uh, on the word of God and believing and speaking and how you can use that same faith and exercise that faith even for others. And that leads to the prayer and the power of agreement. Okay. And then through the prayer of faith uh, as well. In James 5, 14, 15, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will, will save the sick. Okay, notice that prayer of faith will save the sick. So first they say, okay, if, is anyone among you sick? Let them come. Now I know it says here, you know, that they call the elders of the church. But we've again learned already in, this, in the duration of this course that Everybody can minister, right? It's not just for elders, it's not just for pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, you know, etc. etc. But everyone can minister this, right? Let them pray over that person, it says. And then verse 15: prayer of faith will save the sick. Okay, you see how the first three points are in line with this. 
right? And how faith is so integral in everything we do when it comes to ministering divine healing, right? Uh, and I've mentioned this before multiple times that faith is spelled as risk, R-I-S-K. Okay. Most of the times we avoid and uh, stop ourselves from taking that risk because we, one, we are scared. We say, okay, what if I pray and that nothing happens? Or what if that person rejects saying, no, I don't want your prayer. What if, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of, lot of what ifs, isn't it? That stops us from taking that step of faith, you know, taking that risk and going ahead and praying for someone, believing for someone, exercising your faith right, is very important. So through the prayer of faith, go and, you know, just bounce on the chance to get to pray for another individual. All believers can pray the prayer of faith for someone to be healed. So we should not restrict the prayer of faith only to elders. The healing takes place because we pray the prayer of faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and if you ask anything in my name, I will do what John 14, 14 says, right? Okay, so that's um, another point there through the prayer of faith. Through a word of command, was it? Through a word of command, Matthew 8, 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. Right? Now he, Luke 4, 38, 39, now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made a request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Amen. So through a word of command, right? Um, believing, speaking, remember? Believing and acting on it. And we we, we've learned that there is power in the words that we declare, right? Jesus declared, right? God spoke, right? God spoke and he created the universe, right? Uh, he, un he knows the power of the word. He is the word, right? Psalm 33, verse 6, I think it says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, right? Not even words, not plural, like by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and the starry host by the breath of his mouth, right? Jesus, woke, Jesus sleeps in the storm and... And disciples ask the most fascinating question ever you know, to, to, the, to the God of the universe. It's like, don't you care that if you perish? Uh, <laughs> and uh, Jesus, like a boss, you know, wakes up and just calms. Because all he says is peace. And then everybody is left in wonder. Saying, Who is this man? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Right? They obey. So when do you obey something? When you've heard a word of command, right? So all the soldiers in the army, they obey to the word of command given by the general. And that same authority is being given to you and me. And it's left to you. It's left to us. Is how we willing to use that authority for the good, right? Saying, I want to minister healing to the sick through a word of command. Moving on. Um, through laying, through the laying on the, through the laying on of hands, um, let's say the most um, used um, method, I would say, is that you know we see people laying hands uh, on, on and, and praying for. Okay, so through laying on of hands, with anointing oil or with the word of command, whatever it may be, and we see that. Multiple times mentioned in the gospel that Jesus did this, right? Then Jesus put his, put out his hands and touched him, right? He is, uh, Matthew, Matthew 8 says, so he touched her. And then he touched their eyes. Uh, Jesus had compassion and touched their eye. And immediately their eye received sight and they followed him. And then there are instances where people reached out and touched him all as well, right? Uh, we see this instance where uh, this a woman with a show of blood reaches out and touches the hem of his garment. Uh, as well. Okay, so 
through the laying on of hands with anointing oil with the word command. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. So ministering healing to the sick through the laying on of hands is a common way to minister. We lay hands on the sick person and command the sickness to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. We expect the power of the Holy Spirit to be administered through the laying on of hands. Okay. Um, ministering healing through laying on our hands can be done in several ways. Laying on of hands along with the prayer of faith or with the word of command or with the prayer of uh, faith and anointing oil and, uh, and laying on of hands and anointing of oil in the name of the Lord, no verbal prayer may necessarily be made. So there are different methods, different ways, uh, you know, it can be done, but there's just a few examples that's mentioned there, okay? Um, and we also just so that, see that uh, it's not just Jesus who touched people and they were healed. People who touched him also were healed. Right? In Matthew 14, 36, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. Right, so the difference between Matthew 9 and 20, 9, 20 and Matthew 14. So whatever happened here must spread across the town. People must have heard about it. And that's how this person must have also heard that, hey, okay, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be healed just like that woman who was healed. Okay, and it's happened. So, um, Another method is through the announcement of faith. Announcement of faith. Now, faith seems to be the recurring uh, word here, isn't it? Like time and time again, from the way, from the word, from the first method. Okay, uh, build your personal faith, exercise your faith, uh, speak your faith, act on your faith. Uh, come in the, pro the prayer of uh, agreement uh, is acted on faith. And then there is the prayer of faith in itself. Uh, and the word of command is released in faith. And now we have through the announcement of faith. Okay. Uh, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Matthew 15, then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very power through the announcement of faith. Now, uh, Jesus was not in that space, in that place physically to minister healing to that individual. In, he, in all of these scriptures, he is talking to another individual who is there on behalf of another individual. Right? And Jesus is so full of faith. Right? We use this word, uh, you know, to describe God like one of the characteristics is that he is faithful. Uh, every, every time you use this word um, that ends with full, it simply means, say for example, beautiful, it simply means it's, that's full of beauty. Wonderful is simply means it's full of wonder. And the Bible says Jesus is the wonder of wonders, isn't it? He's Say so he's wonderful, he's full of wonder, he's beautiful, he's full of beauty. And then we say he's faithful. That means he is full of faith. If if we need one just one lesson on how to be uh, you know on faith, is we need to encounter the faithful one for us to be full of faith. Right? And then if, announcing through faith won't be very difficult, right? Um, so there are times when the Lord may lead us to simply announce to the person that healing has been done. Okay, there may not necessarily be a prayer or a word of command, or there could be a combination of these two. We announce in faith and authority that the work is done. Okay, so you're praying. So um, let's say, for example, um, um, so I... I I've kind of broken my arm, by the way. Uh, I, I managed to fracture my wrist. And um, so in, in we had a pastor's meeting last week and, uh, you know, and all of them prayed over me for healing, right? 
and they were just announcing and declaring the finished work of the cross over me. Right? That is because we believe, right? And we, we believe uh, uh, this is what the word says. We know the will of the Father, and we know that He can, and He is more than able to heal. Right? And so there will be times and when we pray for individuals, like an example that I just did, actually okay, I'm praying for his leg, for his healing, for his for that this pain to go, for we declare by faith and announce it saying, You are healed. Okay, whether what happens something happens or not, it's not up, it's not up to us, right? Jesus is our healer. All we do is exercise our faith and authority that's been given to us. And we declare life. Remember, right? The uh, faith and the power of the words. Okay. Moving on is through acting in faith. Matthew 9, 6, 7. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Stretch out uh, Matthew 12, 13. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and it was restored as the other. Right? John 9, 7 says, he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and he came back seeing. Now, what is this called? Through acting in faith. Through acting in faith. Okay, so you're telling the individual to try and do this. And then as, as Jesus said this, in the process, in the process of obedience, the healing happened. Right? They, they receive the healing. Now, there are times when the Holy Spirit may lead us to tell the sick person to act on their faith. To act on their faith. You know, and we do that, right? Okay, so we have a shoulder pain, or, you know, or a back pain, or a lower back. We pray for that individual, and we say, okay, can you do this, what you were not able to do before? Can you, can you, are you able to bend and touch your toes? Uh, you know, just an example, right? You get what I'm saying. So, um, that's after praying, but then there will be also times where the Holy Spirit tells you to tell the sick person to act on their faith. Okay, now, uh, you know, we'll, we'll touch on this point a little later as well, but then I just want to mention it right away is that we cannot be um, reckless or uh, presumptuous uh, you know about this and like I mentioned we will learn about this as we go on a much other at a later point as well but then I feel like you know it needs to be mentioned here as well they're saying okay you're praying for someone's eyesight uh, you know, they're wearing glasses and uh, they're having a problem with their eyesight you know <laughs> you can't just take the glasses and throw it and <laughs> say okay you know how much is this uh, you just be prepared to uh, buy them a new pair of glasses, you know. You get what I'm saying, right? Okay, so while we are called to act on our faith, we're also not called to be you know, stupid. Yeah. So, sorry for the lack of that word, I guess. Uh, it's very important for us to be sensitive to the leading of, of the voice of God. That is the key here. Okay, uh, we need to move as he leads, because everything Jesus did was in line with what the Father wanted him to do. He was sensitive to the leading of the Spirit, and how much more should we, right? Um, hey, I hope you all are still alive, um, learning something. Okay, and yeah. Okay, right. thank you, sir. All right. Um, just a few more points here. Another method you mentioned here is when people act in faith. When people act in faith, and we see that woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. And for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, 
I shall be made well. Jesus turned round and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. We know that story. Right? So similarly, people do things in faith without being told to do so. Okay, without being told to do so. And just like the woman with the issue of the blood who made her way through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. This was her act of faith and God honored that. The four men who brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus were acting on their faith. They went to the extent of going up to the roof and letting their friend down from the roof. That's some faith, isn't it, guys? When Jesus saw their faith. Their friend was healed. Their act of faith is something between them and God. God sees their heart and responds. Right? Uh, you know, that like you are praying. And I mean, this can happen over television, isn't it? Uh, how people, and so many testimonies of people being healed, uh, just watching uh, where, where a person is praying, uh, you know, and then, and, you know, they start acting on their faith. They start beginning to check, okay, you know, uh, I couldn't do this, and now I'm able to do that. And probably as they're doing that, God is administering healing to them. So, uh, you know, this point of, when people act on faith, uh, you know, act in faith, God responds. Uh, and how many times have you seen God responding to faith? And he always responds to faith, isn't it? It's like a law in the heavens, in his kingdom. Uh, that just cannot be neglected, you know, or overlooked. It's like, okay, if the person has faith, if this person is working in faith, believing in faith and working, expressing that faith, there is no other option for the kingdom of heaven but to respond to your faith. Okay? So faith is powerful, isn't it? Yes. So uh, the next method is uh, through the gifts of the spirit. Right? Through the gifts of the spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, 11 says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit to all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Okay, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Right? And we've we seen, I think, uh, in Isaiah chapter 18, uh, that he is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of knowledge. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of revelation. Uh, right? So he is the perfect spirit of God. Uh, so through the gifts of the spirit, um, it, it, you, you, uh, there's, you know, when people pray about creative miracles, right? creative miracles is we, you know, we, uh, let's say, for example, a person uh, whose kneecap or who does not have a kneecap uh, is being prayed for. And then the person ministering so prays in faith and declares and asks God for a new kneecap to be supernaturally uh, grow. Right? And every method that we've just spoken on uh, is kind of being acted in that prayer, right? That's a prayer of faith. You're declaring the words, you're laying hands, okay? And, and, then, and then asking the Holy Spirit to come and do His work. And so that's, right, you know, through the gifts of the Spirit. So God is our healer. It's not just about the methods. We're just getting familiar with the methods, okay? Uh, through the healing anointing. So anointing is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Anointing is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The anointing can empower an individual or be present over a congregation, corporately, in a gathering of believers to cause the power of God to be manifested. Okay, um, Luke 5, 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, 
and there were Pharisees and teachers of law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Right? The Holy Spirit was present. The anointing of God was present to heal. Okay, so that's another method um, we use to minister healing. Okay. Wait, uh, we again, I touched upon this thing um, in, the, uh, in the previous point as well, through special anointings, um, as we saw the example of asking God for creative miracles and whatnot. Uh, uh, in all of this, what we need to keep in mind is that we need to be sensitive and recognize this and flow with the Holy Spirit. I desire, you know, see what he wants to accomplish at that time so that people can be touched. Okay. Uh, through repentance and renun renunciation of sin. Uh, it's very interesting because just, uh, you know, uh, about last week ago, I was listening to uh, a sermon on healing. And um, I was saying, you know, and, and as this person was, uh, you know, beginning to pray, he was led to ask this other individual uh, before he could go and minister healing. Uh, he was led to ask him, okay, uh, uh, is there someone in your life that you would like to, uh, you want to forgive, right? Now, what's the other side of forgiveness? It's bitterness, isn't it? And, and, and that's not healthy for us, isn't it? It's, it is a sin, right? Holding bitterness uh, in a jealousy and grudge against another individual. And so this is what he said. So as that other individual chose to forgive and let go of the bitterness. And as this person ministered healing, he was healed, right? And sometimes, more, you know, if not all, sometimes, uh, again, you need to just speak with that individual that you're ministering to. And if you are that individual that you're receiving, it's important for you to know the importance of repentance and renunciation of sin. Uh, you know, since surrendering everything to God. And that releases the healing power of God over, over our lives, okay? Um, another method is through deliverance. Right? As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. And when demon was cast out, the mute spoke. The multitudes marveled, saying it was... It was never seen like this in Israel. Matthew 12 says, Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him. So the, the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. Right? This, we're talking about ministering healing and deliverance. Right? And healing and deliverance. Uh, healing, again, is ministered through deliverance, right? Uh, we don't negotiate. We, don't, we, cast, we cast the de demons out. And we recognize, okay, this is the spirit of infirmity that is over this person, that's oppressing this person, that's, uh, that, you know, that's causing this person to do things that is not normal, that only an evil spirit would do. We recognize that. And in the name of Jesus, by the authority that's been given to us, we act on our faith. And we declare deliverance and healing over that individual, right? Um, and through the exercise of faith when celebrating the Lord's table, right? So it says, 1 Corinthians 7, 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, right? And I've heard of testimonies, and I'm not sure if you have, of how people were being healed as they participated in the Lord's table. Right? Now, if you take the element of faith, if you take the element of God's wonder-working power out, it's just a wafer and a grape juice, right? Wine. 
sometimes the wine can be too sweet or too sour. It's, it's again, it's not in the methods, isn't it? It's about the faith that we believe in and what the Lord has done for us on the cross. The price has already been paid, right? Uh, he bore he bore our sicknesses and our infirmities, and by his stripes we are healed. And that's what it represents. Eh? It is a symbol. So as we as we partake of the communion in faith, we expect healing, and we also teach. Okay, you know, expect to receive your healing, right? So through the exercise of faith and celebrating the Lord's table, and uh, another method is through the use of prayer cloths. Uh, we know the story of a uh, handkerchief that was used, uh, you know, by Paul, Paul's handkerchief. Uh, but just a word of caution here, I think that is, this is more important than uh, just being very familiar. And we, I'm sure you've seen, uh, you know, uh, this method being used before. But just a word of caution here is when using cloths or items or objects, whatever, sometimes if people are not instructed correctly, they can end up making the item that was used to bring them healing or deliverance as an object of worship as a charm or some other supernatural item that gets their attention. Okay. Um, that's, I think we need to keep that in mind uh, more than anything else is that, uh, or any, or any methods for that matter. Uh, I, I just stop present here. Um, we need to go back to the, the original statement that was, that is being made is that the healing is in the person and not in the methods. But we familiarize ourselves with the different methods that can be used to minister to people, to express and uh, to reveal the love of the Father to people. And be sensitive to the leading of his voice because he might, the Holy Spirit might tell you to do something completely crazy and 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 we need to be sensitive to hear and act in faith to what he says. Okay, um, so with this, I just uh, stop here. And what I want to do is I want to encourage you to read the remaining of the chapter, if you, if you will, right, um, before we uh, come to a, a next class next week. So I want to encourage you to um, read, finish uh, the remainder of chapter seven um, when you can. Stop the recording now.